evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to this service of evening prayer brought to you by Christ Church Bora Pair in Beaconsfield, but as as usual on Wednesday for this service coming to you from the rectory in Verdun. Uh, today we are observing a National Indigenous Day of Prayer. Uh, that was yesterday. Uh, yesterday was National uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, and the Church, the Anglican Church of Canada, indicates that as uh, National Indigenous Day of Prayer. Um, because of the way things in the church calendar and whatnot fell this year, we didn't observe it on the Sunday before. Uh, we will, uh, there will be some, some uh, references to uh, this topic in our outdoor service this Sunday, the ecumenical service this Sunday, uh, and probably at some point we will dedicate a whole service on Sunday to this, but because it's it's the week of, I think uh, we should uh, observe that today. Today we'll be using the uh, right to for evening prayer from the U.S. Episcopal Prayer Book. The the link is in the comment in the um, in the Facebook event page, and there will be a hymn. I don't know if we have I put you the, uh, the lyrics are in the comment section below the video. <clears throat> Our service begins on page 115. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We say together the Fos Hilaron, the O Gracious Light, on page 118. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 19. We will say it together responsibly by half verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all lands. And their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just, and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear, 
and it gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sin. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah, or Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 25 through 31. Isaiah 40, 25 through 31. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Here ends the Old Testament lesson. We'll say together the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, on page 118, 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. For this day, all, in this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on them who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from Philippians. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the epistle lesson. We'll say together the Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis, on page 120. Lord, you have now set, you have now set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel lesson is from John 1, verses 1 through 18. John 1, 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He comes, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Here ends the Gospel lesson. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's uh, probably my favorite passage of Scripture. It doesn't come up in the lectionary very often. It comes up on Christmas Day, if you have a Christmas Day service, or sometimes in the daily office lectionary, but this is the, the one in, indicated for National Indigenous Day of Prayer. Um, you know, last year, when we were, uh, we had this observance, we were in the midst of a, uh, some horrific sort of news. Uh, it was after the discovery of many unmarked graves at the uh, residential school in Kamloops, which was shocking for many people, but this is not news. Uh, the fact, the, the horrors of the re residential schools uh, have been known, and this was just a, a, another revelation that kind of reinforced that and brought it to the fore of, of the consciousness of many uh, Canadians who were not aware of this, though I guarantee you that in the church, in the Anglican Church, and our ecumenical partners, the United Church, Presbyterian Church, um, this has been no, uh, uh, well known, and it's been a, a topic of of lament, of uh, penance, let's say, and uh, action since the 90s. But you know how these things go. We were all talking about this last year at this time, and, and a year before that, about this same time, we were all talking about George Floyd and Black Lives Matter. We're not talking about it now, or not so much, uh, because that's how the news cycle works, and maybe it's short attention span of humanity or just the inability to cope with multiple uh, horrors at once. I think there is something to that because for the first time in human history, we have access 24 seven to uh, uh, news from everywhere in the world right at our fingertips. So our great grandparents and, and, and before, uh, they didn't know all these things going on at once. A lot of a lot of their uh, their um, uh, 
peace of peace of mind was not based on the fact that the world was a better place then, but rather uh, ignorance, not knowing. Uh, not just be, you know, it's ignorance is bliss, right? If you don't know about all the bad things going on, you can assume that they aren't. Um, and uh, you know, this this year, you know, it was like one thing, you know, eclipses another. You know, we had COVID, and then. The war in Ukraine, also we're not talking about that so much anymore. There's only so much we can hold in our consciousness at once. So I don't blame people for that. But that's the way the news cycle, it kind of cycles things out. And we don't, we say, we'll never forget this. But are we talking about the indigenous schools very much now? Not as much as we should. We're talking about Black Lives Matter? No, not as much as we should. And these um, those two topics, which came about about the same time of the year in two consecutive pandemic years, those are not unrelated uh, because they come down to the basic, uh, basic issue of uh, human rights. And these are both fallout uh, from uh, empire in some form or another, uh, and white supremacy. This, uh, this past Saturday, our uh, uh, diocesan synod, our annual meeting for the diocese, uh, of course there's business and that's carried off on, you know, the budget and all these things, sort of mundane sort of things, but there's always a topic, and these the past few years, our diocese has been focused on uh, racism, anti-racism, I would say, uh, mostly focused on uh, anti-black racism, which was, came out of the, the George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter uh, uh, events. But it's all connected, and we were focused on that, but we know that Racism at its core uh, relates to other types of racism and discrimination. Um, and in North America, where these two topics are particularly um, pronounced, and I would say that in both our big North American countries, United States and Canada, both of these issues are a blight on the past of these, both of our countries. Uh, it's not that, you know, uh, Canada exclusively owns the indigenous shame, uh, in the shame of the indigenous mistreatment, uh, in, in mistreatment of indigenous people and the United States uh, fully bears the brunt of uh, uh, anti-black racism and the history of slavery. Both countries come out of a, of a similar uh, milieu and similar ground, and both, both our countries share this uh, collective guilt and responsibility for both uh, mistreatment of black people and mistreatment of indigenous people and it's all because of that satanic uh, doctrine let's say or satanic uh, uh, mindset which is white supremacy So this is something we need to keep coming back to. And, I, and I, because of this, the way the news cycle um, acts and our, our attention gets directed to different things, and I know it's, it's, it's hard. And I get, you know, uh, you know discouraged and de depressed when I hear all these things. So I understand that we don't want to focus on it all the time, but there's a reason we, we uh, 
come back to these observances because we can't we can't allow ourselves to forget because the people who suffer this trauma and it is trauma it generational trauma there are people who still living who were uh, who were in the residential schools and suffered abuse physical sexual psychological abuse there's there there are people who are still living that's how close it is in the history to us but not just that it's the generational trauma of you know repeated uh, uh, um, mistreatment at the hands of governments at the hands of churches at the hands of individuals and it's like these you can't just say okay well it's done uh, racism's done uh, all this is finished we you know yeah that's in the past uh, let's move on that's the temptation and that's what you hear some people say it's like well it's all fine now I mean that there was terrible what happened but it's all fine now no it's not because uh, trauma has a way of being passed down through families through societies and when there's this collective uh, trauma it has repercussions for subsequent generations and if we haven't if we have the the privilege and the the, the because of where we were born what race we are whatever our circumstances if we are in that position where we don't suffer from this generational trauma and you don't have to, you don't have to be uh, you know a, a, a person of color to have generational trauma many families have it and uh, many society parts of society have it but it's especially pronounced in marginalized groups uh, especially when we're talking about whole cultures like the indigenous people or uh, black people in North America uh, so the, the healing it's not like oh well that's done the healing takes time when there's any sort of trauma on an individual or collective level healing takes a long time so it's not just let's make some gesture let's do one thing and it's done this you know the healing of relations between indigenous people and settler people those of us who were not indigenous um, it takes time it takes work and it keep it takes keep keep it you know we have to keep coming back to it because it's not an easy fix and in part of the, the the healing whether it's whatever kind of discrimination or racism including also other forms of discrimination such as uh, homophobia it's about listening to those who suffer from this trauma and being open to that not trying to fix everything because we can't but you know listening being open to, to hearing the stories and you know accepting not that you know not our individual responsibility because you know I didn't do any of this none of us did this directly but you know it's the society in our case Canada and our churches that yes did participate in these things and I know this sometimes I you know uh, it, it's, it's a downer to hear about these things right uh, and I don't dwell upon them because I am uh, you know uh, a dark person that wants to make everyone depressed but you know there's a reason we need to be aware of these things and not just oh let's go to church and be 
happy clappy and think positive thoughts because that's not the way the gospel works. Look at the gospel, you know. Yes, there's lots of good stuff. Jesus loves everyone. It's great. But Jesus also got crucified by a brutal, oppressive state. And the, the good news, of course, is that that oppressive power did not win. Death did not win. Darkness did not win. So even when we, you know, we, we, we get overwhelmed with these, uh, uh, these hard things, these negative things, we do have to remember that the hope of the gospel, the light of the gospel, means that good ultimately triumphs. But when we're, as we're in incarnate beings, in living in this world, we're living in the, you know, the, both the resurrection life, but also the crucifixion life. It's both, both of those are part of our human experience. And we have to uh, uh, acknowledge that. Because without crucifixion, there is no resurrection. Without death, there is no rebirth. There is no uh, new life. So... When, when there are difficult things that need to be spoken of, I will do it. And I don't apologize for that because the, 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 uh, the, 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 the role of a, of a good preacher is not to make everyone happy. The role of a good preacher is, this is an old axiom, mm -hmm. is to uh, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And that's what a lot of us are in our, you know, uh, um, our, our, our space of privilege that we, we've been born into, uh, you know, not belonging to uh, an oppressed minority, uh, that we have to acknowledge that we are, we are privileged. And so we need to hear things that make us uncomfortable. Things that, you know, remind us that this is a fallen world. It's not all bad. God's creation is good. And humans have good in them, all of us. But it's a fallen world and our structures, when I say the world, you know, the, the way of the world, the structures of the world, there is violence. And what happened to, uh, and continues to happen to, actually, uh, indigenous people in this country and in and, uh, our neighbor to the south. Um, this is systemic violence against the people. It's sin. That's what it is. It's sin. You know, we talk. We, we might think about sin being our little, you know, peccadillos or whatever we do. You know, not to endorse, you know, uh, <laughs> small time sin, but uh, really, the big sins are the ones that are collective the ones that we participate indirectly through uh, through the structures that we are part of. Now, we can't withdraw from that. We can't say, oh, well, you know, Canada did terrible things in the past, so um, I should disassociate myself from uh, this country. Well... There are lots of good that this country has done and, and continue to do. So to dissociate myself would be to dissociate myself with the, from the good. And likewise, the church, you'd say, oh, well, the church did the horrible things. Well, the church has done many horrible things, not just in this uh, continent, but uh, in various places. But does that mean we chuck it out? Because we all human, all of us humans, are a combination of light and darkness. John's Gospel is always talking about light and dark. There aren't people of light and people of darkness. Each of us has light and darkness in us. It's always there. We all have our shadows. 
both as individuals and as societies, as organization, the church, country, whatnot. But yes, where there is, there is the darkness, but the darkness is not overcome by the light, as John reminds us. So it's not all lost. It's easy to think, oh, that's so, everything's so terrible, and it's like, ugh, why bother? But the light will prevail. And we need to align ourselves with that light as we engage in uh, healing and overcoming by persistence and, and, and dogged determination, overcoming racism and discrimination in our world. Amen. Amen. And now we will sing a hymn, which is uh, Straight, Let Streams of Living Justice. That's what it's called? Yeah, yeah Let Streams of Living Justice. The, the tune is maybe familiar to you, it's uh, uh, the tune of I Bow to Thee, My Country, uh, a British uh, patriotic song. It's common phrase 575.
continue with the creed on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will suffer this form A on page 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with the Holy Spirit. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through the mercy of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Amen. Now is our time for intercessory prayer. If you have prayer requests or healing or other support, please type them in the comment section as we pray together. God of peace, God of healing, and God of reconciliation, we lift up to you all of the suffering human family. We especially pray for, for healing among indigenous peoples of this continent, for reconciliation, for righting of wrongs, for healing of generational trauma. We pray that all the churches may be and remain committed to the truth and reconciliation process, even when other issues vie for our attention. And we pray that our government may take steps to right wrongs and improve conditions for indigenous peoples now. God of love and mercy. Yeah. We pray for, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, especially those in the east of the country where those who are under direct attack. We pray for those displaced and refugees. We pray for those fighting on the front lines. We pray for a peaceful resolution to this conflict and protection of all the vulnerable. And we continue to play, pray for the people of Russia that truth, brotherly love, and light may dispel the clouds of darkness 
and disinformation and propaganda. And we especially pray for radical conversion at the top with the leadership of that country, radical conversion and turning from darkness to light. God of love and mercy, We pray for the needs of our parish, for our families and friends. We pray for all who are ailing in mind, body, or spirit. We especially pray for Art and for Lorna. We pray for Kat, for Donna, for Sandy. Irene, for all those who are ailing, I pray for all those who are mourning the death, death of loved ones, I pray for all who have died, especially those who have died this day anywhere in the world. May light perpetual shine upon them. And may they rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for the leaders of the nation, leaders in society, leaders in government, in religion, in business, those who have power and influence. May they all use their power and their financial resources for the, for the good of humankind and the good of our planet, and not for selfish motives. God of love and mercy. Yes. We pray for all those who travel as we emerge from pandemic restrictions and start summer travel again, that uh, you may uh, protect all who travel and that we may continue to act with, with prudence so that we do not bring on another wave of COVID. God of love and mercy. Mm -hmm. I pray for all those who are working in preparation for the World Esperanto Congress in August, all those who are in the organizing committee and all those who are volunteering. Give us strength and, and wisdom. And we pray for everything to go well. God of love and mercy. Yeah. We pray for protection of our planet, that we as stewards of creation may be inspired to take to care for this home that you have given us, this good creation that you have bestowed upon us, and take the collection, collective action needed to combat climate change and other environmental degradation. God of love and mercy. Yeah, okay. Gracious God, we lift up to you all these prayers that we have spoken, that we have whispered in our hearts. All this we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. We say together the general thanksgiving on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your un unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of, our, of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. 
by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer. Our, our service continues, unless otherwise noted, uh, every Thursday, every Wednesday at uh, 7 o'clock on Facebook Live or the website. This Sunday, please note, there will be no worship service at Christchurch Bow Repair. We will all be participating in the West in the Lakeshore Ecumenical Service with our United Church and Presbyterian neighbors. Uh, as far as I know, this service will not be broadcast because doing broadcast outside is uh, uh, more difficult because of environmental conditions, and uh, I have enough to do without volunteering to even attempt that. Uh, so it will be in person. Details will come through the church email, um, and I hope to see many of you there uh, in person at this, at the Bay Durfee uh, Town Hall. Uh, information is in the uh, parish email. Our regular Sunday services will resume the following Sunday, uh, whichever that is. That's the first Sunday in July. I can't remember, but uh, just remember, don't show up to church. This don't show up to church at Christ Church this Sunday because we'll be in a different place. And with that, I wish you a uh, a uh, blessed rest of the week and a good night.